Earth Day was born on April 22nd, 1970, 50 years ago. Since then, we've seen our population grow by 4 billion. Massive areas of pristine forests have been clear-cut, burned or flooded, and millions of species have already been driven to extinction. Toxic pollutants have spread through air, water and soil and into every person. Our destructive practices have radically altered the atmosphere's chemical composition while causing ocean pH to drop catastrophically. In the 1800s, the rise of the Industrial Revolution gave science and its handmaiden technology the power to move mountains. Linear, analytic, left-brain thinking became dominant over the collaborative, holistic right hemisphere. Progress became equated with growth. Economics became the dominant science. In the 1950s, consumerism and credit kept the post-war economy burning, but to maintain it, we had to get hooked on growth to feed our debt. Advertising came to the rescue. It led us to think that progress was a linear route to more cars and bigger houses in suburbia full of technological labor-saving devices and TVs. And then the 60s hit. Right brain thinking rose against the left brain creep of the preceding decades. It was an age of rebellion, of marches and demonstrations, an er era of rejection of injustice and a boiling up of noble ideals. It wasn't just protest against something, it was supremely creative. It gave birth to an explosion of music and the civil rights movement, the feminist movement, and the peace movement, and to the environmental movement, sparked by Rachel Carson's Silent Spring in 1962. All these movements were thoroughly intertwined with music and art as integral parts. They rose from a shift to try to balance the left brain dominance of Western thinking. Looking outside during these extraordinarily difficult times, we're struck by clear skies with no plain contrails. It's quiet. As we're battened down the hatches, we give Mother Earth a much needed respite from our activity and development. It's astounding to see what people have done to meet this crisis. International efforts to develop vaccines have overcome national jealousies, distrust, and enmity. Provinces are coming together to support each other and the federal government, cities and towns are rediscovering the power of compassion and working together. 50 years after the first Earth Day and during this challenging time of slowing down, it's fitting to rededicate ourselves to the power of the right brain or rather the power of balanced thinking that balances left and right, male and female, reason and imagination, individualism and collaboration. Let's not fall back into the trap of trying to solve the great problems of this world with only half a brain. That's what got us out of balance and into trouble in the first place. We've reached a point where every day must be Earth Day. There's no more time to lose. And we have an unprecedented opportunity to reimagine the world we want to live in and to work collectively to create it. Despite all the challenges we're up against, let's look for signs of hope. Hope for a more just, sustainable world. Hope for a better future for all living things and this beautiful living planet. Happy, Happy Earth Day. Day.